Okay, so this is yet another video on circle theorems. Before I begin this, I recommend that you pause the video and try this problem. I'll give you a few seconds before I continue. Um, so you're looking for this angle x, if it wasn't clear, between these two sides. Now, I hope you have given this problem a go. Now is your last chance to pause if you haven't. Um, if you did get this right, then amazing job. This is quite a difficult question. Um, now, if you did try it, though, uh, and even if you didn't get it, and even if you did, what you've probably been left with after trying this problem is the overall sense that this problem ended up being much harder than you thought it was, regardless of whether you got it right or not. It looks fairly simple, right? It's just a quadrilateral. There's a bunch of triangles. I know all the angle rules for those things. Um, this is a straight line, for example. So this is 90. Therefore, angles in the triangle of 180 makes this 50. And I can do that. Keep going around, right? Another straight line. This is 60. Uh, another straight line here. Um, so this is 40. Um, but I think here you get a bit stuck. Um, you don't seem to have any more rules to, to, to um, fall back on. You can maybe call this angle y, and you can say, well, x plus y is 90 because of, again, an, a, one last triangle in here. Um, if you try and add up all the angles, go around the outside to make 360, you end up with this same thing. So you end up getting a little bit stuck here. Um, maybe you can consider that this triangle and this triangle are similar. That might have been your next thought, um, but it's hard to make too much progress with that. Maybe at this point you just guessed. Maybe at this point you just guessed that x is maybe one of the other angles in this picture. Um, just because it's equal for some reason that you hadn't quite figured out yet. Um, and that's fine. Like having intuition for a problem is good and it's certainly something you can use in maths, but um, it certainly doesn't mean that you got it right, even if it does end up being the number you're thinking of. You know, what, what maths is, maths is about justifying um, and, 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 and telling almost someone else why your answer is the only correct answer. It's about that rigorous logic that, that leads you to an answer um, that you can then justify to someone else. Um, so yeah, this problem ends up being quite hard. We'll, we'll pause it here and, you know, you're probably also wondering, well, why when I said this problem was about, this video was about solar theorems, am I talking about a trapezium? Um, it's not a trapezium, sorry, about this random quadrilateral. Well, okay, let me try and explain. So I'm going to... Um, I'm going to start with, with a circle theorem. So here it is. Um, hopefully you recognize this. If you have a circle and you pick two points and then you set up this kind of thing, uh, this angle um, down here is going to be equal to this angle over here. Right? Um, and then here's another circle theorem. Uh, it says if you have a circle um, and, you, and you put a quadrilateral inside of it, then the opposite two angles, um, they add up to... Oh, I don't want to do that. This angle, I mean, not the point. This angle uh, and this angle, they add up to 180. And it doesn't matter where you put the original two points, they, they always add to 180. It doesn't matter where you put these starting two points, those two angles are always equal. Um, and, and, and one last one, I guess, if you have a circle, and if this is the diameter, then this is 90 down here. And again, it doesn't matter where you put that, you can even put it on the other side. Um, and that's all well and good. Notice how I started every single one of those definitions. Um, I, I did it in exactly the same way that almost every teacher would. I said, if you have a circle and you set up like this thing in here, then these two angles are equal. Or if you have a circle and you set up a quadrilateral in size, then these two angles will have 280. And likewise, if you have a circle and if this is the diameter, then this is 90 here. Um, and the point of this video is to try and reimagine the order in which I'm saying those things. Like, I don't want to start with a circle. I want to maybe talk about these things and then see where I can go from there. Let me explain, because that sounds really vague and weird. Um, here's a shape that I hope we all recognize. It's just a square. Um, and I'm sure that you've been asked by a teacher at some point in your life, or if you are a teacher watching this, I'm sure you've asked a student at some point in your life, um, what are the properties of a square? Um, and hopefully you'll, you'll dutifully get the answer back that a square has four sides. All of the sides are equal and all of the angles inside are 90 degrees. And it has to be all three of those things, right? Like, if it doesn't have four sides, then it could just be an octagon with four equal sides and four 90 degrees somewhere inside of them. If it doesn't have all the sides equal, but has 90 degree angles, then it could be a rectangle. Or if it has not, if it has four equal sides, but doesn't have the 90 degree angles, then it could be a rhombus. So it has to have four sides, they all have to be equal, and it has to have 90 degrees on the inside, and those are the properties of a square. Um, but what if I told you, okay, I'm thinking of a shape. Let's just ignore what's on the board right here. I'm thinking of a shape. It has four sides, 
all of the sides are equal and it has all 90 degree angles inside of it. What shape am I thinking of? Well, hopefully you'll, you'll tell me I'm thinking of a square. So sure, whilst we can start with a square and we can agree that the properties are that it has four equal sides and four 90 degree angles, we can also start with the properties and agree that I could only be thinking of a square. We can start with the properties and instead of thinking of them as properties, we can think of them as the definitions of the shape itself, as the definitions of a square. Like we can end with the square. We can start with the properties, which we can actually think of as definitions, and we can end with the square. Um, and it turns out we can do the same thing with circles. So let's just say you put two random points down and then put a third random one down as well. Um, then you construct some lines between the points that you just made, um, and then you measure the angle um, again between the points that you just made. You get an angle in this case of 90.6. Um, okay, good. Now let's put down another point, um, and let's do the same thing again. All right, so here, here, and then let's put um, an angle down between those two points there. Now these two angles are different right now, um, just because I did it randomly. But if I can drag this point D, around to make it so that it's the same as the other angle. So I think I'm gonna to have to bring it in a bit, bring it in a bit, bring it out a bit. There we go, bang, 90.6. It turns out that I have just perfectly defined a circle through these three points. Um, so bang, and there's a circle, right? So if we start out, notice what I did there. I started out by just taking two points, um, once I had two points, I picked a third point and I measured the angle between the two original ones and the third one. Then I picked another point and tried to find a place where those two angles are the same. Then bang, I magically end up with a circle. Right? So sure, we can say if you have a circle um, and you do this setup, then these two angles are the same. But likewise, if you can find some points randomly in space where the angle is the same, then you end up with a circle. And you can do this with the other circle theorems as well. It turns out that they all just define a circle in their own weird way. Um, so I'll do the same thing again. Let's make an angle here. Um, let's measure it. Don't know what it will be. 86.7. Um, I'm actually going to, just because I can't be bothered to do the maths properly, I'm just going to drag this to be a nice easy one of like 95. 95.1 um, will be close enough just because I can't bother to do the maths. If I pick another point randomly down here, um, and again, join it up, and then uh, and then measure the angle. I was saying I can't bother to do the maths, but I still can't do the maths in my head. Um, hopefully you'll see what I'm trying to do here. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm not going to make these angles equal. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try and make these angles add up to 180, which I think means that I need 84.9. Sounds about right. Um, and it turns out if I do that, then Quite magically, I end up with a circle going all the way through these four points. Um, so you just kind of magically create a circle. If you if you follow, again, remember what I did there is I, all I did was I, I picked two random points, then I picked a third random point. I dragged the third random point to a degree that I could easily think of what the last angle needs to be, and then bang, when you figure it out, you have a circle. Um, and let's just do that one more time. Pick two random points. Um, that's not picking two random points. Pick two random points is what I meant. Pick a third. I'll go up there, um, draw your lines in, measure the angle, um, and I'm, I'm just going to do one more of these. But um, if you if you if you drag this point K down to, to to find a place where it's exactly 90, and this is annoying because the thing is below the mouse. Um, but if you manage to find 90, then you've done two things. Not only have you made a circle. Now. Actually, wherever you put three points, you can always make a circle. So there's nothing special about that. Um, I'm desperately trying to find 90. There it is. Um, there's, so there's nothing special about three points. But there are in this case, because what you've done is you've managed to define a circle whereby this line is the diameter. So notice I said nothing about the diameter until the very end. Um, but if you have two points, you find a third where it's 90, then not only does a circle go around all three, um, but you also find the diameter of said circle as that red line. Um, so these circle, def these circle um, properties or circle theorems, we call them, th th it's not if a circle then these properties happen. You can think of these properties as being the definitions of circles. They're defining a circle in their own weird way.
um, and constructing almost, you can think of as constructing a circle in their own weird way, sometimes giving you even more information um, about, about other properties of the circle, like its diameter. Okay, so, so why have I spent all this time talking to you about this? Well, if we go back to this problem here um, and, and fill in some stuff that we know, we, we filter all this stuff here. Um, notice how, or, okay, here's two points, and then over here, we make an angle of 50 if we pick this point here. But if we pick this point here, we also make an angle of 50 between those two. What that means is that by definition, there must be a circle going around all four of these points. Um, because we can start with the theorems and end up with the circles. We don't have to start with the circles. Um, and now this problem is just incredibly trivial. Um, you can do this in two ways. You can either say, oh, well, look at Z and Y. They're defining 60 degrees up here at W. Therefore, X is also 60 degrees. Um, or you can say, well, okay, this is now a cyclic quadrilateral. Um, these two angles add up to 70, which means these two must be uh, 110, uh, which means this is 60. But in either case, you get X is 60 degrees. Um, and so, you know, maybe halfway or three quarters of the way through the video, you were saying, oh, well, this is the most pointless video you've ever made, Mr. Drew, which I would contest because I've talked about triangle congruency for over half an hour on my channel. Um, but it's not pointless at all because you can take problems that have nothing to do with circles. And if you notice a circle theorem or the makings of a circle theorem within the shape, then you can define your circle around them, right? And so the circle theorems are not just for solving problems about circles, because if you spot the theorem, you can define the circle around them, um, which is an incredibly useful skill um, on occasions like this question here.